Welcome back to Torment. So, I've talked to everybody here. Well, not these people. Well, these cultists, but I don't think any of them are going to know the Whisper Lock or the name of the Central Prince. This. Oh, I haven't tried interacting with the statue. Hmm. I don't know if that statue's a setteral, but maybe. One way to find out, right? All right, here I go. This tall obelisk is crowned with a the carved stone head of some elegant, sharp-eared animal with six eyes. Bands of engraved hieroglyphs lap ar wrap around it. As you approach, the head seems to turn and stare at you. Your companions don't seem to notice. You watch from a low branch as grave robbers tear up the stones of the ruined temple's nave, looking for the old catacombs. Their leader sits on the stone head of a fallen statue, patting it and stroking its pointed ears. He laughs. This is what the old monks worshipped before the Jarudi wiped them out. The prince of the Setero. They say his big ears hear all the secrets ever whispered within earshot of any of those six-eyed pests. You hiss at the insult. He looks up. Oi, there's one now. Hasn't been a monk alive around here to tame a setter in a hundred years. He chirps at you. Come here, little one. Let me see that jeweled collar of yours, won't you? Except lovely workmanship. Give him a disdainful look and climb further up the tree as the obelisk returns. The memory fades and the obelisk returns. Okay. But then tell me the name of Central Prince, though. You watch from under a gandu bush as a father and mother drop double armloads of spring wood in the middle of the temple ruins. Then sit and mop their brows as their three children begin stripping the stalks of the bark. Plenty to build without here, at least, says the father. And we'll need all we can get, says the mother. Without a perimeter fence to keep out the bowels and the skull hounds, we Dead in a week. Making a note. What about the lax? One of the children cries. The father laughs. Pray to Guni, daughter. Maybe he'll send one of his servants for us. He's the prince of all Setro, you know. Aha! Your ears prick up. At last, you are wanted. It's time to hunt. That must be the passcode for the whisper lock in the necropolis. Guni. The eyes of the statue fade, though they do not go out entirely, as though it has divested itself of responsibility. Why it did so remains a mystery. All right, sweet. So now I have the passcode. I don't know that I want to tell the cultists the passcode. I mean, I could just open it and go in myself. The thing is, if I just leave everybody here, at some point the cultists are going to kill these people. And if I tell them the passcode, they'll probably just kill them anyway. Or, hmm. Well, one thing is, I never rifle through this guy's pockets. find nothing but a lovely folded scrap of paper with the number 4135 and the name Najma. Okay. 4, 1, 3, 5. It's probably another two of them. No, we're only one. I hope the cultists. I don't much like the cultists. 
Well, as long as the day doesn't pass, they're not going to kill anybody, right? So I can go inside the tombs and explore on my own, then I can make a decision on what to do later. All right, here I go. I might just have to kill the cultists, if that's what it takes to keep the memorialists and these other people alive. Well, just one memorialist, I guess, and these uh, wacky travelers. Something I could do. I'll remember that. With a sigh, the shimmering field disintegrates into glimmering shards of light. The controls are now accessible. Making a note. Oh shit. Ha! Motley surprises evidence, as is his pleasure. He clasps you on both shoulders. Now we can get back to helping Lord Inifair. But first, to release the prisoners. Motley nods. One of the cultists draws his blade, but instead of cutting their bonds, he puts it to the neck of the first prisoner in line. He, he intends to kill for our Lord and the gate. You got what you want. Let them go. He motions the cultists to halt. Confusion blooms on his face. The spirit is encaged in flesh. We must release it for Lord Inifair. I thought you understood. This is what we do. Well, I don't like using deception, but... This seems like the only way to try to get through this without killing anyone. Oh, this is a might thing, huh? Well, then this is a... Uh, I got 80% chance with Eretus. Terrible chance with Matkino. Well, 75 if I go all out. Terrible grin. As me, I can go up to 80%. Same as Eretus. Nice. He stumbles backward, his grip on the blade loosening. You! He glances at your tattoo, his face paling even further. Yes, my lord. It will be as you say. He hurries out of the corridor. A piece of paper flutters out of his pocket as he goes, but he doesn't notice it in his haste to leave. The paper lands at your feet. You pick it up as his footsteps recede in the valley. The snow was in Motley's pocket. The ink is brown and cracked and might be blood. Most of it is illegible. Scratched in a hasty scrawl, but you can make out four numbers at the bottom. Five, one, four, three. Sweet. All right. All right, I managed to get this done. Got rid of those guys and nobody died. Thank you, stranger. I cannot express my gratitude enough. The memorialists owe you a great debt. She steps closer, lowering her voice. But though we are safe here, now the true danger still lies beneath. You must stop the children of Emma's gate. Their gate is within the necropolis itself. Close it, and you may free this valley. I will help you in any way that I can. How do I find the cultist's gate? Making a note. I have learned a great deal while held hostage. These children have loose tongues. All the looser for their insanity. The gate and their lord in affair can be found in the tomb 1254. Right? Probably go to that monastery. Go and stop them if you can. Can you tell me how the terminal works? She laughed softly. Would that I knew. The necropolis is a vast underground complex. So vast that generations of memorials have yet to explore it all. The terminal, and those like it in the tombs themselves, will take you where you want to go through its magic. All you must do is press the correct key sequence. The ancient memorialists carved numbers into the terminal so that we could more easily record and return to any location we desire. The pedestals in the tombs themselves have additional features. 
pressing the central button will return you here to the surface, while the button surrounding it will take you to an adjacent tomb in the direction. It is through this discovery that we have been able to explore the necropolis in a more orderly fashion. Now that they're gone, is it possible for me to rest here? It is relatively safe, yes. I will keep watch to ensure it. Just let me know whenever you wish to retire. I'll see that now. Of course. I can stand a little more of that. Got all my points back. Alright, so let's use this terminal. My buttons are arrayed around the central hex. An indecipherable display glows on the bottom, where a six button would be otherwise. The number has been crudely carved into the surface of the five buttons. Do you remember the code to the first tomb? Now's the time to use it. No, not yet. I want to go to other places first. All right, let's go to 4221 first. 4221. When the fourth hexagon illuminates, a field of energy forms around you. A tight, sucking sensation pulls at your gut. Then suddenly, you are somewhere else. Is this thing? Those air conditioners or something? Dehumidifiers? Yes. As you approach the rock pillar of the tomb, you feel subtle variations in air temperature and pressures around you. Tiny gusts and zephyrs push your eyes towards specific striations of the stone. Alright, we'll let them guide you. Making a note. Remembering what you were told. You hold your breath. The gentle breezes control the flickering of your eyes towards unpredictable places on the wall, and the patterns and purpose of the gusts quickly become clear. They have been training your eyes to see, and suddenly the truth comes clear in twisting letters made from distortions in the air itself. They're in an older version of the truth, but you can read them. It's an epitaph. It, it bears the name Choi Kai Sol. Wait, wasn't one of the memorials out there with the last name Kaisel? The, the Ronos guy. Choi was his daughter? Question mark? Kaisul. That was the name of the memorialist you met when you entered the valley. Ronos Kaisul. Hey, what I just said. The wind has not stopped. Its subtle pressures are trying to guide you to new patterns. All right. Words appear in the air shivered into being by subtle gusts, and you read the tale. Come you now to the tomb of Choi Kai So. It stands empty, for her body is gone, rested away by the foul children to feed their endless gate and its infernal master. We raise this marker to commemorate the life of our beloved, to swear undying vengeance upon the man who stole her from us. Choi Kai So, the name will live forever. The shapes hover in the air a moment longer, and then the air ceases its restless flight. The letters disappear instantly, and all that remains is the sound of your breathing. Okay, enough for you. Fine. Honor remains honor, always. It is not for us to know what end is true. Only our actions and achieving it matter. Finally, my choice is made. Kafal, perfect adventure. Let's go. Seasons roll, turning, eternally returning, but no summer twice. I stuck. The console here is similar to the one in the Acropolis entrance. There are five buttons, each with a number carved into them. Did the memorials cart these numbers in every tomb? But there are additional buttons as well. Six edge buttons surrounding the carved ones are lit. Each of these is an arrow scratched into it, pointing away from the center. A small hex in the center is glowing as well. 
So I can go to one of the adjacent tombs, I can go back, or I can put in a new code. Let's go up and to the right. As soon as you press the button, the field of energy surrounds you. Feel the same tight sucking sensation at your gut. Then, those swords. If you think that's best, then on 2K. Fine. Andrew went three. These are probably black or backers right or something. The Ninth World will remember Carlo's danger. Okay, so I bet most of the other tombs I can go to are probably just uh, names of backers or whatever, Kickstarter backers. Probably just the ones merged up that I have numbers for are ones that contain something of significance, so let's go to those. Alright. Four, one, three, five. behind this marker. You struggle to wrench it free. As soon as you do, you realize through an odd twist in your gut more than anything else that this is some cast-off's mare caster. You tuck it away and turn your attention to the epitaph. These flowers are complex arrays of circuitry, each petal covered in carefully laid copper wires. Filaments r run from the petals into a ruddy, strong glass sheath, ending in a now dead diode. The entire device pulses with inner heat. Right, it's usable. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but okay. Beautiful, beautiful Najma. A casualty of a war that she had nothing to do with. 1999 through 2003. Yes. This fight came to an abrupt end with the realization that truth is irrelevant. All that matters is in society is belief. Those that see the truth outside accepted beliefs can suffer in silence or cry out in futility one last time before they disappear. Okay. Um, there's that one in that book. I didn't write that one down because I could always reference it. Not book in this little note. Phoenix is the 1535. Okay. I'm ready. One, five, three, five. The arcane humanoid shimmers and displaces across multiple version of itself in a blink. So quick is the motion that you almost doubt your senses. The black clad being makes slow deliberate movements. Its eyes like dull gray <clears throat> jewels set into an expressionless face. You sense a malevolence caged. Its voice is deep and rich. I am silver. You are a fellow seeker, yes? Tantalum has sent me to learn the secrets of the valley. I can smell the desire in your skin, but not the success. I have explored many of them and learned many things. Tantalum has said I will find secrets here. He is correct. Keep up the search. 
and your desires will see a reward. You must keep searching, but time, yes, there's still time. What are you? I am an acolyte, a seeker of knowledge, a devourer of artifacts, a stumbler on the path of truth, his eyes shine, an answer for the unanswerable. So you believe tantalum? Certain. All of humanity's wisdom, even much of that that is not of humanity, lies buried in this necropolis. It is only a matter of time and effort before one finds answers. What have you found in these things? His strange face shifts to a variety of shapes. The truths of the old world reveal themselves to him. Secrets of time and reality. The shifting of particles smaller than perception allows. Undergird all. But they are not part of my truth. My answer, I will find it. Okay. Ready. I'm making a note. This nearly human face has been sculpted to look like it is emerging from the stone floor. As you draw near, the mouth suddenly begins to move. It speaks in an unfamiliar tongue, and you feel a light touch across your mind. The face continues speaking, adjusting pitch and vibration to, of its uh, words as it zeroes in on the shared language. The jumble of noise becomes recognizable speech quickly, and the face becomes more human. You recognize the face. It is that of Phoenix, the enigmatic man in the valley. The voice is surprisingly pleasant and warm. I am Phoenix. Seeker of knowledge, lover of wisdom, questioner of truth. I found ways to bend space and fold reality, but it was not enough to keep death from my door. If you are hearing this message, I am missing a part of my consciousness. I have communicated with it and feel its presence nearby, but it does not return. The voice fades, taking with it the memory of the language it spoke. So we need to tell Phoenix to come to this tomb and it can rejoin with the rest of itself. How high that highest candle lights the dark? Daffod Burlacan. Yes, now. In honor of nearly 100,000 souls who gave willingly and braved this world, is a monument carved from their torment, from their dreams to yours, the believers set on that. At last. A frail humanoid creature with olive skin, clad in rags wrapped around its waist, rummages around aimlessly, fidgeting with elongated hands. Scattered and frizzy dark strands on its scalp appear to be hair. As you approach, he rears his head, revealing large yellow eyes with tiny black dots that stare back at you gleefully. His smile, wide for a creature of his size, shows a perfect set of teeth as his head moves inquisitively side to side. You stand in Oddwald's mind, he proclaims. His, its, thoughts are strange. No words, only music. Humming, whistling, singing, sometimes with lyrics, sometimes without. They make no sense at all, not even music. Okay, tell me about yourself. Why, my friend, I am Oddwald. Oddwald the same. Oddwald the magnificent. Oddwald the true seer and keeper of the past. The one who knows, the one who remembers, the one who hides, and the one who laughs. He pushes some of his 
gewgaws around the, on the floor, creating an intricate pattern, or perhaps just a mess. They said I was mad. Carkers, my mind a melted machine. When did they come in to see? I did not open the eyes to let them taste the colors of my thoughts, but they swept the knowledge into me and out of me, and all that's left is dust. He drums an arith arithmic pattern into the dust of the tomb's floor. After a moment, he scatters his assembled chunk with a swipe of one hand. The pieces fly randomly, but each lands during one of the beats. They land in a straight line. He gathers the pieces, insight, foreknowledge, intuition, a predator's mind trapped in the prey's body. See the puzzle fit together, find the nearest ball pole. What are you doing here? Doing. Doing. All the myriad delights of life lie before me. Breathing, heart beating, observing, digesting, expressing, micturating, pontificating, answering, ruminating. It is a good time to be alive, to be alive. He shows a piece of his junk. Say, I am discovering myself and the world and the hidden parts of the universe. Listen, these tombs, I know them. They sing to me. They are new children, the children of their gate. I know them. I even know their fearful in affair. They are not secrets, though they are secretive. Look around you. You see the walls? I see the history, the past, the future, the potential. I line up probabilities, and then I push them around until they are true. And when I understand the patterns, I retain the patterns. So what am I doing here? Learning he gathers up his junk again. Tell me about the children of the endless gate. He lowers his head and smiles. They know me. I know them. And when they come with ill intent, when they come as friends, I greet them warmly, and I keep an open and I keep an open otherwear at my back. When they come as enemies, they cannot find me. These doors to the other worlds, I have opened them. One brought me here. One opened my mind and spilled my thoughts out. One taught me to put my thoughts back in. He has a handful of small bones. You don't know where he found them. He casts them on the floor and laughs to himself and scoops them back up. So strange to think of a mind as a place to store thoughts. Only by custom, only by memory. Much better to find a place for your thoughts in the world. He pauses and thinks. Of course, then you have to worry about someone stealing your thoughts. What do you know about in affair? Who knows a sibling better than a brother who has forgotten the face of his father but remembers his acts, who has seen a broken mind turned into a vengeful thing? He has no taste for blood nor, for, nor flesh, but his children bring him these morsels anyway. They do not need his advice. They do not heed his advice. They call him Lord, but he is their slave. Poor in affair, a life misremembered. Misinterpreted, he regards his junk pile, a life wasted in fear. In affair, too near, too dear, engineer, fierce, and seer. Can you tell me anything about Choi Kai So? Everything. She is dead. She was killed. She was avenged. Or not avenged. Who can tell? He catches the expression on your face. Nothing you don't already know, I see. Why did you ask that? As you poke through the supplies I will house. Do I put my fingers in your brain? Leave it alone. Now. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. He breathes a sigh of relief. Gratitude is hard to find here. I would hate for you to have stolen mine. All right. Look, Ma, no hands. Name Lian Tad. I'm going. Unending, unchanged, yet to begin, before now, time, now, before time. Empty worlds to fill an unremarkable void. Entropy is the only truth to remain unchanged. Semaj Trebra. Okay. You want it done right. Alright, so I think I only have two places left to go. The um, where the endless gate people are and that first cast off. 
Let's go to the endless gate. Yes. First. One. You can see the whites all around this man's eyes. His face is frozen in a rictus frenzy. Can you feel it? The power of the endless gate. It calls to us. It is time. Time for what? Power, glory, ecstasy. He stares at something behind your head. You're not sure whether he actually heard you at all. Before he can utter another word, the man's spine goes taut. His expression becomes that of a towel being savagely wrung out, but his voice stays drenched in childish glee. They call us now! Join us. The masters beckon. Wow. Some dead bodies here. Let's go all, you and me. The only thing to interact with here is the gate itself and of course the controls. We can't interact with the dead bodies. Fine. Cloying invisible fingers tug at your skin. They're drawing you into the portal, eager for the light that flows through your body. Eager to keep you there. You have a bad feeling that once you step through this gate, there will be no way out except to find the one who opened it. Well, I have to end this, so I, I need to step into it. I need to do that. I'll remember that. The cloying fingers release you, perhaps knowing there is nowhere for you to go. You are within the endless gate now. You are theirs. The air is chill and moist. Screams of agony permeate the darkness around you, and you sense something watching. There is no choice but to venture forth. Cool. Alright, we'll leave off here and we'll explore the endless gate next time.